Starting on the pole for race number one is Ian Elias. On his outside is Clara Kendall. Uh, Ian Elias on the pole for the first time here. Uh, this is the first time we've been at Phoenix since late 2011, where there was a very thrilling side-by-side -side battle between Barry Juvenal and Andy Lambert. I believe it was Lambert who took the victory that day by utilizing the outside of the track. Well, for some reason, the outside here has a bit more grip. I believe they uh, diamond graded the inside line on the track, so there's not quite as much grip down there as there used to be back when we ran here in the early to mid-2000s. Uh, as we go through the field, you can see a few notable names uh, further back in the field. Uh, Row 12 and row 13 are all occupied by Lucas Motorsports, who have their cars set up just about uh, the same here. Casey Lester, a bit further back, he made into race number one uh, due to a very strong showing last week. Jordan Demas as well there on the inside of row 16. JC Carpenter, a good run for him last week at Road Atlanta. As we continue to go through the back of the grid, there's a few notables back here. John Bracci, Frank Azzaretto, Magenta Nelson, Andrew Kale, Bernfart Jr. made it up. Uh, despite his prowess being at super speedways. Now race number two, Brian Gallagher won the pole by a few tenths of a second over Greg Woodard. Uh, Kenny Steffens shows that he still has it and qualifies in third place. Barbara Burt made her living out here, uh, made her early racing career out here. She starts in sixth place. She used to race on the desert roads out this way. Alina Lazareva has a very strong qualifying run in ninth place in race number two. These are the drivers that finished in the bottom half of their two races uh, at Road Atlanta, 21st and below at those races, 21st or 20th, something like that. And uh, Kurt Pliskin is making his first uh, PCC Cup Series start there. He starts in 18th place on the outside of Claire Aussier in row number nine. So it'll be good to see him, Retro 80 Racing, fielding a fourth car here. And uh, they're gonna be swapping drivers in that number uh, 81 car, that car is gonna uh, switch numbers from 81 to 82, uh, 83, depending on the weekend, but uh, that is going to be a fourth effort for them. Uh, starting in row number 17 on the inside, Dale Kensington Jr. makes his first ever PCC Cup Series start. He's been trying for a few weeks, uh, for a few uh, months now, and he finally makes his first start. As he hit the last two rows, there's uh, John Kirkpatrick and, uh, well, the slow back markers. Ian Elias coming out of turn number four onto the front stretch, and he takes the green flag here for race number one at Phoenix over Clara Kendall on the outside. Luke Peller in strong run in third place. Ben Atkins starting to peek on the inside, but he thinks better of it. Slots back in line, getting a push from Richard Hertz there. And Ian Elias starts to clear Clara Kendall on the bottom, although the bottom is the slower lane here. Coming onto the front stretch, it looks like Clara Kendall might edge him there on lap number two. Now lap number three, here we go. Clara Kendall on the bottom trying to get a run on Ian Elias, trying to get around him. And she will complete the pass here on the backstretch, head through the kink. As you see, there's a battle back there for a third place between Lenny Jacobs and Luke Pellerin. Pellerin on the outside there. On lap number five, here's Gabriel Messina, who by lap number five has already lost the main group. Uh, he is quite slow, and he, you can see there there's Sam Lussar and Cale Bernfart Jr., a couple other cars in front. But he, uh, there's something not quite right with that car. Maybe they didn't nail the setup quite right. Lap number seven, first caution of the day as Cody D gets stuffed into the outside wall by Nick Azure. A uh, bit of a help, bit of help there from Stringfellow Vincent in the 84. Looks like he pushed up the track a little bit. We're going to go on board with Nick Azure here. Uh, head through the kink, and you can see there uh, he just pushed up the track, and uh, Nick Azure had nowhere to go but uh, straight into the side of Cody Deke. I think he might have had a little help there from Stringfellow Vincent. On the restart, Clara Kindall leads over Ian Elias and Kyle McWalla as Lenny Jacobs makes a look on the bottom, trying to make it a 2-3-4 for Paloma Autosport over Luke Pellerin, but Pellerin has none of it and fights back on the high side there in the back. Uh, Pellerin is going to hold on to fourth place, but it looks like nobody has anything for Clara Kindall. Uh, Frank Azzaretto pitted under caution coming to the one to go and uh, had some trouble getting out of the pits he makes the start but he's about half a lap down at this point uh, he stalled in the pit lane and uh, they ended up getting the car refired sent him back out and he did not lose a lap yet here's Kyle McWalla who ended up uh, winning the PCC lights title last season 
and uh, well, he didn't perform too well in the preseason tests or at Road Atlanta, but here he is in third place showing exactly why this team hired him. He's doing a fantastic job in, I believe this is his first ever start at uh, Phoenix. He attempted the race in 2011, but did not qualify. Here's Luke Pellerin having an awesome run in fourth place on lap number 18, trying to hold off Cameron Taylor there uh, for that position. Uh, Lenny Jacobs has fallen back to the sixth position, but Luke Pellerin having a very strong run. He is advanced up from the PCC Light Series, and he is doing a very strong job as well, along with his uh, alumni or alumnus, uh, Kyle McWalla. Surprisingly enough, here is Nicholas Corradovo struggling. He is in only uh, 17th position on lap number 20. And it uh, looks like we've got some caution lights on. Maybe there's an incident. Uh, but he is, uh, Nicholas Corradovo is not having quite the day he's been hoping for here. Yes, there is indeed a caution. Jordan Demas slow on the front stretch. He gets run into the by uh, Nick Azure. And uh, I think uh, Karachi got a piece of that, as well as maybe Kale Burnfart Jr. going on board with them. And oh, yep, uh, John Bracci got a piece of it, but somehow Cale Bernfart Jr. Uh, dodged that incident. Uh, Jordan Demas would stall the car and have to get towed back to the pits. He'd lose a couple laps in the process. And uh, Clara Kindle leads on the restart. You see there, Jordan Demas was starting on the bottom, and he's starting to hold up a bunch of people. And uh, oh, look like we got a bit of a collision there between Lenny Jacobs, uh, McWilla, and uh, Jordan Demas on the high side as now Lenny Jacobs fights his way through, uh, followed closely by Isaac Michaels there, as Demas is not being quite uh, the most gracious backmarker, as now uh, Daniel Sharp's working his way up through the field. Jordan Demas decides he's had enough, the car isn't quite handling how he wants to, and he's going to pull that car into the pits and lose even more progress in that number 74 car tough break for him. Here is Daniel Sharp running in 8th place on lap number 29. He's doing a fantastic job this weekend. Uh, always known as a speedway expert. He ran uh, Chicago last year for the Zero Two 2 team, uh, the motorsports team, and got a top 15 with them. So uh, he has proven that he can do uh, quite a good job in uh, not the best equipment. Here is Cameron Taylor, and he's running in 3rd place on lap number 30, doing a fantastic job. He managed to get around Kyle McWalla there. And he's holding station in third place, uh, trying to hunt down uh, Ian Elias. You see there, Jordan Demas went another lap down. Here's J.C. Carpenter doing a fantastic job. He's in 30th place in this number 79 car now. I might uh, 30, 30th place may not sound like a fantastic job, but uh, this team is vastly underfunded, and uh, they're doing. They fought their way into race number one, and they're doing just a great job. Uh, 19 pulls into the pits, uh, John Bracci, apparently the damage that he received uh, in that incident would be terminal, and this would take him out of the race, and he would be, uh, I believe he would be the first retirement of this event. Uh, here is the number four car of, uh, of Isaac Michaels battling with uh, Kyle McWall there for the fourth position. Isaac Michaels is a short track expert coming up from the PCC Lights series last season where he won one race at Mid-Ohio, surprisingly enough. Uh, he considers himself to be a short track expert, and he attempted all the short tracks last year in the PCC Cup Series to varying success due to uh, his involvement in accidents. We can report that John Bracci did indeed retire after pulling into the pits, and he will be the first retirement of the day. Here is uh, Clara Kendall, and she has opened up her lead by quite a bit by lap number 40 here over Ian Elias as uh, now the leads open up to about a second or two. Here's Gabriel Messina getting ready to go a lap down on lap number 43 already. So uh, his day has gone from uh, bad to worse pretty fast. So uh, Clara Kendall pulls on the inside and uh, Messina just lets him go by without too much of a problem. Here's Richard Hertz and he's running up in the uh, 14th position and uh, he's got a puncture on that car. He's gonna pull that car into the pits and get that taken care of. Tough break for Hertz. He was having a pretty strong run here today. Uh, that's going to put him a few laps down. Here's Dan Lackleiter, and he's running quite strong. He is up to 8th place now. Lap number 44 doing battle with, uh, I believe that's Dan Sharp. On the inside, And we've got uh, Richard Dean McGiver 
and Laris Ryu there. So very strong run for Lecklider. Lecklider uh, won uh, at Carbondale last year. So we're ahead there in two weeks. So that's going to be interesting to see. Casey Lester having a good strong run here. Running in 18th place, battling with Ingrid Hadland for that position. Casey Lester opened up uh, his own team running the number he ran in 2011 uh, for Dodge Racing Development. And he's got a few uh, sponsors on board. I actually think he's using that old equipment uh, from that uh, from his stint there that he managed to scrounge together. Here is Sam Lusar who went a lap down on lap number 55. And, uh, well, his day's gone from bad to worse. And he's reporting a vibration in that car as well. Uh, Isaac Michaels has worked his way around both Kyle McWalla and uh, Cameron Taylor to work his way up to third position now. So uh, I guess his short track success is starting to transcend into these shorter speedways as he, now he's trying to hunt down Ian Elias and uh, Clara Kendall, but they're way too far up in front. I had to take the hood off of, uh, Cameron, of uh, Cody Deek's car for some reason. And... Uh, well, whatever they did didn't quite help its situation because that car is uh, slowing on the track and he's going to pull that thing to a stop on the apron and uh, that's going to be the end of his day. Uh, here, here we've got a battle between Stringfellow Vincent and Ike Durbin for 13th and 14th place, uh, lap number 57, and uh, these two are battling quite strong. They both had really good runs last week and they're hoping to continue their streak and uh, move up in the championship after this event. Duncan Cobb as well. Duncan Cobb is running in uh, P16 on lap number 58, doing a fantastic job in this number 70 car. He's uh, kind of been surprising, uh, considering he didn't have quite the success last season in PCC Lights. But uh, whatever, uh, whatever this uh, Clayson Enterprises team is doing, they're doing it quite well. And it's helping both Duncan Cobb and Whitney Fuller as, oh, we've got three wide there, four wide now, as Nicholas Cordovos has a problem. He's got a puncture on that number 39 car. Uh, left front is flat on that car. He's going to pull that car into the pits and get that tire repaired. And they're going to send him back out. He's going to lose a couple laps in the process. Tough break for your championship leader. As Magenta Nelson Andrews starts spewing a cloud of smoke here on lap number, I believe this is lap number... Uh, 59 or so as she pulls that car to the apron and her day is going to be done from about 34th position. It wasn't a very strong run for her today. Laris Ryu is in 10th position doing battle with uh, Daniel Sharp and Dan Lackleiter. The Indonesian Jet as their fans like to call her is definitely uh, flying her way towards the front as uh, here is here we've got a bunch of cars going a lap down as now Clara Kendall's worked her way up into the mid-teens and uh, low 20s as she's starting to lap all these cars. Uh, we've got a few, we've got a few cars uh, blocking her. Roy Cook especially, uh, but she manages to clear all them. And uh, now green flag pit stops begin just a few laps later on lap number 77. As you can see, all these cars filing their way into the pits, following the leader, trying to stay on her strategy. However. Ian Elias stays out a couple more laps to get a few more laps led. Uh, he led the first two laps, first lap or two, I believe, and now he's trying to get an additional lap led uh, to try to secure maybe an additional bonus point or two, although I already think that Clara Kendall has secured the lap leader bonus here today. As we look here, and you can see, there goes the leader. Uh, I stand corrected, there goes the leader right now as uh, Ian Elias has lost the lead on pit road, although he's only going to be a few seconds behind. Here's Ben Atkins, uh, who won round two at Road Atlanta, and he's currently running in the 12th position, having a pretty strong run here today. Richard Hertz, despite his uh, unorthodox pit strategy, has actually worked out in his benefit, as now he's running up uh, in the 18th position, still on the lead lap with only about 30 laps to go. And... Uh, He's doing a pretty strong job here today, running in 18th place, and, uh, well, unfortunately he went a lap down a few laps later, but now Nicholas Corradovos is going a lap down. His uh, unscheduled pit stop uh, actually played in his favor, and he's running in 17th place, but he goes a lap down just, uh, just a few laps from the finish, 
as now here we go we've got Samu Sar having a suspension issue it looks like that vibration turned out to be terminal he missed the pit lane and uh, he's gonna stop his car right next to the wall there and uh, because he stalled on the racetrack and not on the apron that's gonna draw the third caution of the day on lap number 97 as we get a restart here uh, Clara Kendall is leading the field. James Hewitt right there is in 15th place. He is the first car one lap down. Uh, so they're going to do some blocking for the leaders for Clara Kendall as she starts to pull away. And all the way back there, there's uh, Ian Elias, and he manages to clear the crowd. And now he's got to hunt down. He has to hunt down Clara Kendall here with just about 10 laps to go. I don't think he's going to be able to do it. He can hold pace with her but he's only slowly making up ground. I don't think he's going to be able to do it unless he has quite a bit of help as uh, Cameron Taylor's battling on the inside of Josh Marshall and Andy Lambert, and oh, looks like Ian Elias is going to get the help that he needs as Cameron Taylor got dumped into the wall there uh, with just a few laps to go. That car's got quite a bit of damage on it, and I don't think he's going to be able to make the green-white checkered as Clara Kendall takes the checkered flag, but they're going to line him up. Uh, all the cars on the lead lap, there are 14 cars on the lead lap for a green-white checkered as Clara Kendall leads the field to the green flag. Ian Elias has the coveted high lane as Kyle McWall tries to force it three wide. We've got four wide in the back. Oh, we've got Luke Pellerin into the wall and a bunch of cars into the wall back there as now it appears that it's a three-car battle for the lead between Clara Kendall, Ian Elias, and Kyle McWalla making his first start since 2011 in the PCC Cup Series. As now it looks like Ian Elias is going to lead that lap. There's Richard Dean MacGyver who managed to snake his way through. And Ian Elias is going to hold the high side. We've got side by side battling there. Driving through the cloud of smoke. It looks like Ian Elias is going to be able to clear Clara Kendall and have the high lane coming into turn three and four. And now coming out of turn number four, they go side by side. But it looks like Ian Elias is going to take his, wi his win number two here in the PCC Cup Series. Luke Pellerin got dumped into the wall by Isaac Michaels and his day would end just two turns into the green-white checkered. Uh, looking at a couple other cars, Laris Ryu got hooked into the wall by uh, Dan Sharp. A uh, couple other cars were collected. Looks like there's Dan Lechleiter, uh, Daniel Sharp, as I mentioned. Looks like uh, Stringfellow Vincent got a piece of it. Dan Lechleiter got a piece, but he would continue on and uh, finish the event. Uh, Duncan Cobb also got a piece. Here's Stringfellow Vincent who managed to snake his way through. Uh, getting a piece of damage, but he'd still finish uh, pretty high up in the standings. We're going to take a look at the standings here. Richard Dean MacGyver snaked through the incidents on uh, the first lap of the green-white checkered to get a fourth place finish. Ben Atkins did as well, and he finishes in the top five, his second top five of the year. Stringfellow Vincent finishes in sixth. Ike Durbin despite getting damage, as well as Dan Leckler and Duncan Cobb and Isaac Michaels all finish in the top 10. Lenny Jacobs limps home to 11th, as with Dan Sharp. Luke Pellerin and Laris Ryu would retire on the first lap of the green-white checkered. Despite missing the green-white checkered, James Hewitt and Richard Hertz both have strong runs. Same with Ingrid Hadland. Ryan Griffin gets his second top 20 of the year. Casey Lester, a round of applause for him, bringing that underfunded car home in 19th place and Josh Marshall rounds out your top 20 in race number one. Brian Gallagher is the pole sitter for race number two with Greg Woodard and Dan Foray to his outside. Looks like Kenny Steffens is forcing the issue back there going three wide with Dan Foray and he pushes Dan Foray sideways and sideways uh, he goes up the track and uh, he's gonna start losing a few positions and he's gonna start dropping like a stone as now Brian Gallagher has opened up a gap between himself and Greg Woodard, Greg Woodard and the rest of the field. Here's Kenny Steffens running in third place on uh, lap number four, and he's made a strong return to the speedways since his injury at Dwyer in 2011. First caution, lap number four, Jacob Eicholtz gets dumped into the wall by Chris Benson and Silvia Rinaldi. Uh, he continues on without losing too much speed, actually. I'm not even sure why they threw the caution. Perhaps it's because of the tire smoke that... Uh, came out of that car, uh, but he would continue on without too much of a problem. Uh, he'd get the damage repaired on that car. Here's Brian Gallagher once again leading on the restart over Greg Woodard. You've got uh, 
Whitney Fuller and uh, Kenny Steffens battling back there for third place. Uh, looks like Fuller's going to try and get the advantage there on the inside. And uh, Fuller has just had quite a strong run. She's uh, been with this team for the past uh, year or so. Uh, she ran a part-time schedule last year with this team. And now she's battling on the inside, trying to get around even Greg Woodard now. So uh, Whitney Fuller definitely coming out strong. Here's Dale Kensington Jr. Uh, making his first PCC Cup Series start. He's been attempting races since 2011 to no success. But uh, with this twin race format, he's getting a ride here with the third, uh, the racing team, uh, the motorsports team, excuse me, car. And here is John Jefferson making an appearance, driving for Cowboy Racing in the number 76 car. And here is his teammate, Randy Weber, who's uh, running fairly decently here today. He's running in the mid-20s right now in a old uh, Raptor racing car that he purchased. And now, oh, we've got lap traffic. Um, well, they're pretty slow. Uh, th that's only, this is only lap 14 now, and they just want to lap down. Here's Alex Phillips running in 10th place on lap number 17, uh, PCC Lights alumnus, and he's doing quite a strong job here today, running up in the top 10 now. Matt Brinson is going a lap down on lap number 18, so uh, these back markers are really, really off the pace, considering that we went green uh, on lap number 7. So if they're losing laps uh, once every seven or eight laps, that is uh, definitely going to impede the leaders. Is now Greg Woodard, second on lap 19, doing a strong job trying to hunt down uh, Brian Gallagher once again now that they've got everything sorted out single file. Although Gallagher appears to be the class of the field here today. Uh, here is Gallagher's teammate Alina Lazareva, who's running in sixth place. A very strong job. A very strong run for the Russian in her first oval race. So uh, it appears that she's caught on quite fast. Here's Kurt Pliskin uh, getting a one-off drive with the Retro 80 racing team. He's running in 13th place, holding steady right behind Gaspar D'Souza. And uh, well, he's adapted quite well to these PCC Cup Series cars. And uh, he's doing quite a strong job. He's already gained five positions. And he's starting to work his way, trying to work his way around Gaspar D'Souza although uh, they appear to be locked in a battle. As you can see, the gap that Brian Gallagher has opened up over Greg Woodard and the rest of the field is absolutely massive. Uh, he appears to be the class of the field today, and I doubt that anybody is going to have anything for him if he continues at the pace he's at, as he is lapping uh, several tenths of a second faster than everyone, really. Dale Kensington Jr. up there getting ready to go a lap down here on, uh, I believe this is lap number 23, and uh, well, he just let him by. Oh, uh, looks like Ramsey Cockner's got a tire going down on that car. He's going to pull that car to the apron. Got three wide up there with Ryan Matthews and a couple other people, but uh, Ramsey Cockner pulls his car to the apron. Tough break for him. He's going to lose quite a few laps getting that car limping back to the pits. Uh, here is Kelly Blackwater, who's having a very strong run, surprisingly. Uh, never really known for her super speedway prowess, but she's running up in the top 15. She's in 15th now on lap number 27. And, uh, well, top 10 kids eat free, so there's a possibility for that here today. As so, oh, back markers, we've got uh, Creeper Stevenson, Chris Washer, and Eun Kim there. And Candace Bowman, who is uh, trying to keep herself from going a lap down this early on. As, uh, well, you can see just how much slower those guys are as, uh, well, they disappear into the distance. Here's Ramsey Cockner running last six laps down, but at the rate that uh, these back markers are going laps down, I don't think he's going to be holding last for too much longer, uh, considering that uh, Eun Young Kim and those guys just went three laps down. Here's Barbara Burt running in 12th place on lap number 36. She started her career racing the desert roads out in this area. And here she comes to the racetrack, and she's putting together a strong top 15 run in front of her home crowd. Here is Sylvia Rinaldi running in seventh place on lap number 38, right behind her teammate, uh, Claire Aussier. And, uh, well, she has not really performed up to par uh, at Australia and uh, Road Atlanta, but here she's trying to really shake those rumors that she's not quite cut out for a ride. But uh, she's doing quite a good job right now, running in pace with her teammate. 
here's Tom Delgado, who's somebody who hasn't really been running at any pace whatsoever. He uh, He's getting ready to go a lap down on lap number 40. And uh, Tom Delgado has really struggled to come to grips with this track, and he's not running quite well. I believe he's running in 24th position right now, 23rd position, something like that. And uh, here are the Cowboy... Uh, Cowboy Racing teammates of Randy Weber and John Jefferson getting ready to go a lap down just a few laps later, and uh, well, they've been uh, they've been performing up to their standards, uh, and they've been running uh, for the entire race decently high, uh, so good job for them. Here is uh, Dan Foray running in fifth place on lap number 46. His teammate is running in second place, but still a fine showing for Dan Foray, the Canadian. Kenny Steffens is in third place. He just put Tom Delgado a lap down. And uh, once again, just a fantastic recovery for Kenny Steffens, considering he's been out of the sport for two and a half, three years now uh, due to uh, back and neck injuries uh, caused by a vicious crash at Dwyer Speed Park in 2011. Looks like uh, Gaspar D'Souza is running here, and he's got a problem. Uh, he swerves that car to the right, cuts off. Oh, he he's not able to hold on to that car. Something is definitely wrong, either with a tire or with the suspension, as Denny Adams make a, makes a clutch avoidance there. As it looks like uh, Gaspar Suze is going to pull that car down, and he's going to pit that car. Something is not quite right, and they're going to get that diagnosed. Luckily, it was not terminal, and they're going to send him back out onto the track. Here is Damon Jones, uh, who's in 20th position who just went a lap down, it's lap number 51, and uh, Damon Jones is, uh, he expanded to a two-car team, you can see his teammate right up there getting ready to go a lap down, Denny Adams, who made a clutch avoidance earlier, uh, going on board with Brian Gallagher, as now he's getting ready to put Kelly Blackwater a lap down, and uh, Blackwater is running in 15th place right now, so you, oh, there's some contact with John Kirkpatrick and Blackwater, take a look at that you see there Blackwater just really had nowhere to go she was going up the track and Kirkpatrick was trying to hang on to that car apparently he's battling a loose condition but uh, Brian Gallagher setting a blistering pace here it's only lap 56 of 110 and he just left up to 15th place uh, Denny Adams in the 25 car looks like uh, oh there's something not quite right with that car uh, suspension failure on the 25. I think after he co he collided with uh, Gaspar de Souza there, that caused some suspension damage when he hit the outside wall, and that's going to take him out of the race. He's going to be the first retirement of the race, and he will get his first last place finish of his career. So what we said before about uh, Ramsey Cockner looks like he's not going to finish last as he just passed uh, Chris Washer for last. Uh, Chris Washer, these cars are so far back that they have not yet uh, passed Denny Adams. So Chris Washer is going to hold on to last place for the next few laps. Uh, and here is Kurt Pliskin now getting ready to go a lap down. Uh, on lap number... This is lap number 63 of 110. So he is uh, Brian Gallagher is just going on a lapping spree right now. Uh, nothing appears to be able to stop him as his tires clearly have not fallen off as much as everyone else's. That or his car is just that much better. Here's Preston Bell trying to salvage a good run after falling out very early on at Road Atlanta. He's currently running in ninth place right behind Silvio Rinaldi and Claire Aussier in this number 75 Pepsi Tonnerre. And now lap, uh, here we go, a uh, few laps, about uh, 30 laps, 40 laps from the finish. And Greg Maddox, who's running in 10th place, is getting ready to go a lap down. Uh, he is trying to hang on to that, uh, trying to hang on to the lead lap like crazy. He is blocking Brian Gallagher every chance he gets. Uh, I think uh, if you look closely, Gallagher may have some. Uh, I think Gallagher might have a bit of hood damage there. As you take a look there, I think he does. Uh, so we're gonna have to take a look and see where Gallagher got that hood damage. Oh, here we go, three wide with Alex Alenko and Billy Ray James. And, oh, he got hooked, and he slams into Matt Brinson's door. That's going to do some damage to the right front of that car, but it doesn't appear to be affecting him too much as Junior Hardern goes up in a cloud of smoke on lap number 72. Uh, he was running four laps down at this point, 
and uh, he misses the pit lane. I think he's hopefully that car can stay on track and uh, make its way back to the pits. Fortunately, I think it does, and that's not going to draw the caution. But here's Eun Kim, who's uh, drastically slowing for some reason. Something is not quite right with that car. And here comes John Kirkpatrick, and he just flat out, he just dumped him. There's really no excuse for that. Caution number one would fly in lap number 70, or caution number two, excuse me, would fly in lap number 76. As we go on board with John Kirkpatrick, uh, he goes to the outside, and he just... He just turned him. There's no excuse for that. Uh, here is Joe Craig, and he slams into the back of Eun Kim, who... That must have been some sort of spotter miscommunication, because it uh, looked like Kim was coming down the track, and uh, Joe Craig just piled in, not having a clue where he was going. Under caution, Barry Juvenile's clutch goes as he was trying to downshift. Uh, the clutch broke on that car, and you can see... There's just a plume of smoke coming out of it on lap number 78. He blew up from 14th place one lap down. Uh, now there's only nine cars on the lead lap. Uh, on this restart here, we've got a uh, couple cars back there. Uh, Greg Woodard is hanging onto the pack, but for some reason I don't see Kenny Steffens. Kenny Steffens would have started third. Uh, we're going to try and figure out what happened to him. As, oh, Kenny Steffens had a tire going down, coming to the green flag. Uh, he's going to pull that car into the pits following the pace car. But luckily for him, we've got a caution here on lap number 81. Alex Alenko gets pushed four wide with Kelly Blackwater, Jacob Eichholz, Billy Ray James goes into the wall, Creeper Stevenson. There's uh, Pete Maverick as well there on the bottom. And all those cars would spin out. All would continue on, fortunately enough, somehow. See here, uh, Damon Jones makes uh, gets just a little bit of side damage, but makes an excellent maneuver trying to dodge that wreck. Kenny Steffens, fortunately enough, while he was on pit road, uh, he managed to get out of pit road and beat the pace car, and he would stay on the lead lap now. So we have nine cars on the lead lap once again. Uh, Brian Gallagher leads the field. Uh, Greg Woodard actually hustles quite a bit to get in front of uh, Whitney Fuller there. And now Greg Woodard is the second fastest car on the track and he's lapping times that are comparable to Brian Gallagher's. So it's possible that we might have uh, a little bit of a battle here at the finish, although it would require some lapped car intervention because I don't think that Woodard can really hang with Gallagher. His car is just not quite up to snuff. Somehow, by some miracle of science, here is John Jefferson running in 16th place in... Uh, in the cowboy racing car. I don't know how he managed to get up here. I think he stayed in front of uh, Randy Weber and caught a lucky break. So he's running in 16th place somehow in that number 76 car. A very good run for him and it shows what kind of gritty determined racer that John Jefferson is as now it looks like uh, Greg Woodard is definitely starting to catch Brian Gallagher. I don't think Gallagher's uh, tires were the best that they put on that car. Uh, not quite as good. They're not reacting quite as well as the other ones. Here's Whitney Fuller running in third place right in front of Olino Lazerva having the best run of her career by far. Trying to hunt down Greg Woodard and make her way up in challenge for the lead. Alex Posington has some tire problems and he pulls that car into the pits from 20th place with just eight laps to go. He's got an issue with that car but here is John Kirkpatrick and uh He's struggling to keep up to speed, and uh, something does not sound right with that car. I think it just dropped a cylinder, because if you look here, you can see even Matt Brinson is catching him, and uh, they were running comparable times, and uh, well, that car, that car, if he doesn't pick up the pace, I don't think they're going to black flag him. As now, you can see just how fast Brinson flew by there. Uh, something is definitely not right with that three car. Uh, I reporting that he is he has dropped a cylinder I don't think they're gonna throw the black flag for him since it's so close to the finish we've only got something like uh, eight or nine laps to go so yeah, I think they're just gonna let him putz around out there and you can see just how slow he is how fast Brian Gallagher is gaining on him and oh he has to check up he's trying to pick a lane to get around him and he chooses the low lane you can see just how slow he is there uh, and here's a look from Greg Woodard looking at uh, 
There you can see just how close he can get. Maybe if uh, he was able to be held up a little bit more there, Brian Gallagher was, he might have had a chance to catch him. But to no avail, Brian Gallagher leads every single lap at Phoenix, and he will take the win in a dominating victory here at the Phoenix International Raceway. Greg Woodard finishes second. Kenny Steffens passes Whitney Fuller, who drops down to uh, fifth. Up to third, Alina Lazareva, a very strong run for the Russian in her oval debut. Whitney Fuller drops down to fifth. Claire Aussier and Sylvia Rinaldi finish nose to tail in sixth. Dan Ferre finishes eighth place, and Preston Bell rounds out the cars on the lead lap. Greg Maddox finishes a strong tenth. Barbara Burt uh, raced the desert roads around this track, and she rewards herself with a 11th place finish. Kurt Pliskin finishes in 12th place, a strong run in his debut. Alex Phillips proves why he got that ride in the first place due to his uh, PCC Lights experience. Apparently that's transcended over to the PCC Cup Series. Uh, Kelly Blackwater finishes 14th. Unfortunately, kids will not eat free. Uh, Pete Maverick finishes in 15th, a strong run for him. Chris Benson, Damon Jones. How about John Jefferson in 18th place driving for the underfunded Cowboy Racing Car sponsored by the City of Phoenix? An 18th place in that underfunded entry. A very good run for him. A round of applause for John Jefferson. Jacob Eichholz and Joe Craig round out your top 20. Now let's take a look at the points. Clara Kindle leads over Ben Atkins by one point. Ian Elias is in third place after that win. Stringfellow Vincent and Richard Dean McGyver are in fourth and fifth. The best showing for uh, Retro 80 Racing since last year when they finished 1-2-3 in the championship due to everyone else being caught in the white void. Uh, Ike Durbin in sixth place. Dan Lechleiter running very strong this year in seventh place. Same thing with Duncan Cobb and Luke Pellerin. Watch for all three of those drivers as the season goes on. Ingrid Hedeland, I'd like to apologize to her personally as we have not fixed her uh, flag icon on this point card yet. Uh, we have in the individual point in the individual uh, tags, but unfortunately we have not fixed it yet in the point card. Apologies to her, we'll fix that for the next race. Brian Gallagher with his win moves up to 12th place, Kyle McWella 13th, Isaac Michaels, Nicholas Corradovos drops from being your point leader down to 15th. Ryan Griffin finishes uh, this race 16th in points, Laris Ryu, uh, James Hewitt, uh, as we go down, it appears that we've also got uh, a two-way tie for 19th between Lewis Jones and Daniel Sharp, and that will round out your top 20 in points here today.